uh, go to that table, find out how you might help out. Our scripture for this morning uh, comes from Psalms 139, verses 13 and 14, and Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, that I know very well. And Ephesians chapter 2, for by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For, it, for we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we may walk in them. We give thanks. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we ask that uh, you would help us to receive your message that you have for us today. We pray for Allie and the passion that she has for our children and our youth. We pray that that passion would come through in her message. And above all, Lord, that the words you have given her this week to share with us may come through loud and clear that we might write them on our hearts and we would go out and live them. It's in your holy name we pray. Amen. Every year when students graduate from high school, um, I like to present them with a book. And it kind of goes in place of a card. And it's the book, You Are Special by Max Lucado. So each of our graduates received this book this morning. And I do this for two reasons. The first is because the message presented in You Are Special, while it's written for children, is especially relevant for students, for graduates, who are just starting out in their adult lives. And secondly, because I hope for them that they can continue to enjoy or learn to enjoy reading now that they are out of school and it's not being forced upon them. Um, so I am going to share this with you this morning. Rob, this morning when I came in, reminded me of a quote by C.S. Lewis that he set, told us at Christmas, and that is that any children's book Oh, I don't remember it. Basically, any children's book should be worth reading when you're an adult. Otherwise, it's not ever worth reading. That was the gist of it. Um, but this is called You Are Special by Max Licato. The Wemmicks were small wooden people. All of the wooden people were carved by a woodworker named Eli. His workshop sat on a hill overlooking their village. Each Wemmick was different. Some had big noses. Others had large eyes. Some were tall, and others were short. Some wore hats, others wore coats, but all were made by the same carver, and all lived in the village. And all day, every day, the Wemmicks did the same thing. They gave each other stickers. Each Wemmick had a box of golden star stickers and a box of gray dot stickers. Up and down the streets, all over the city, People spent their days sticking stars or dots on one another. The pretty ones, those with smooth wood and fine paint, always got stars. But if the wood was rough or the paint chipped, the Wemmicks gave dots. The talented ones got stars too. Some could lift big sticks high above their heads or jump over tall boxes. Still others knew big words or could sing pretty songs. Everyone gave them stars. Some Wemmicks had stars all over them. Every time they got a star, it made them feel so good. It made them want to do something else to get another star. <coughs> Others, though, could do little. They got dots. Punchinello was one of these. He tried to jump high like the others, but he always fell. And when he fell, the others would gather around and give him dots. Sometimes when he fell, his wood got scratched, 
so the people would give him more dots. Then, when he would try and explain why he fell, he would say something silly, and the Wemmicks would give him more dots. After a while, he had so many dots that he didn't want to go outside. He was afraid he would do something dumb, such as forget his hat or step in the water, and then people would give him another dot. In fact, he had so many gray dots that some people would come up and give him one for no reason at all. He deserves lots of dots, the wooden people agreed with one another. He's not a good wooden person. After a while, Punchinello believed them. I'm not a good Wemmick, he would say. The few times he went outside, he hung around other Wemmicks who had a lot of dots. He felt better around them. One day, he met a Wemmick who was unlike any he'd ever met. She had no dots or stars. She was just wooden. Her name was Lucia. It wasn't that people didn't try to give her stickers. It's just that the stickers didn't stick. Some of the Wemmicks admired Lucia for having no dots, so they would run up and give her a star, but it would fall off. Others would look down on her for having no stars, so they would give her a dot, but it wouldn't stay either. That's the way I want to be, thought Punchinello. I don't want anyone's marks. So he asked the stickerless Wemmick how she did it. It's easy, Lucia replied. Every day I go see Eli. Eli? Yes, Eli, the woodcarver. I sit in the workshop with him. Why? Why don't you find out for yourself? Go up the hill. He's there. And with that, the Wemmick, who had no stickers, turned and skipped away. But will he want to see me? Punchinello cried out. Lucia didn't hear him. So Punchinello went home. He sat near a window and watched the wooden people as they scurried around, giving each other stars and dots. It's not right, he muttered to himself. And he decided to go see Eli. He walked up the narrow path to the top of the hill and stepped into the big shop. His wooden eyes widened at the size of everything. The stool was as tall as he was. He had to stretch on his tiptoes to see the top of the workbench. A hammer was as long as his arm. Punchinello swallowed hard. I'm not staying here. And he turned to leave. Then he heard his name. Punchinello? The voice was deep and strong. Punchinello stopped. Punchinello, how good to see you. Come and let me have a look at you. Punchinello turned slowly and looked at the large bearded craftsman. You know my name? The little Wemmick asked. Of course I do. I made you. Eli stooped and picked him up and set him on the bench. Hmm. The maker spoke thoughtfully as he looked at the gray dots. Looks like you've been given some bad marks. I didn't mean to, Eli. I really tried hard. Oh, you don't have to defend yourself to me, child. I don't care what the other Wemmicks think. You don't? No, and you shouldn't either. Who are they to give stars or dots? They're Wemmicks, just like you. What they think doesn't matter, Punchinello. All that matters is what I think, and I think you are pretty special. Punchinello laughed. Me? Special? Why? I can't walk fast. I can't jump. My paint is peeling. Why do I matter to you? Eli looked at Punchinello, put his hands on those small wooden shoulders, and spoke very slowly. Because you're mine. That's why you matter to me. Punchinello had never had anyone look at him like this, much less his maker. He didn't know what to say. Every day I've been hoping you'd come, Eli explained. I came because I met someone who had no marks, said Punchinello. I know. She told me about you. Why don't the stickers stay on her? The maker spoke softly. 
because she has decided that what I think is more important than what they think. The stickers only stick if you let them. What? The stickers only stick if they matter to you. The more you trust my love, the less you care about their stickers. I'm not sure I understand. Eli smiled. You will, but it will take time. You've got a lot of marks. For now, just come see me every day and let me remind you how much I care. Eli lifted Punchinello off the bench and set him on the ground. Remember, Eli said as the Wemmick walked out the door, you are special because I made you, and I don't make mistakes. Punchinello didn't stop, but in his heart he thought, I think he really means it. And when he did, a dot fell to the ground. We live in a world that is constantly trying to tell us our worth and our value. If we fit the mold for what the world deems as good, then we fit in, we're accepted. And if we don't fit the mold, or if we like the wrong things or listen to the wrong music, then we aren't accepted, we're outcasted. Just like the Wemmicks, all people are made unique. We're all different. Some people like the Colts, some people like the Bengals, some people are cat people while others are dog people, some people like Harry Potter while others are wrong. <laughs> we all have a unique set of characteristics, of likes and dislikes, and also like the Wemmicks, our differences can cause challenges for us. Punchinello was a Wemmick who always got dots. He wasn't the most talented. In fact, I think Punchinello would have said that he wasn't talented at all. His paint was scratched, and sometimes he said the wrong things, which is always my biggest fear, because whenever I'm talking to people, I typically do say the wrong things. So, so people gave him dots. And we don't live in a world where people are walking around with a box of star stickers and a box of gray dot stickers, um, giving each other literal stars and dots. But we do live in a world that tries to continually tell us whether or not we are good enough. A world that tells us that if our clothes are the wrong size or our skin is the wrong color, then we aren't worthy. Or if we love who the world deems to be the wrong person, then there must be something wrong with us. Or if we don't make the most money or have the newest tech, then we aren't worth the world's time. We give each other stars and dots when we draw lines in the sand and say that some people are worthy, some people matter, while others don't. And it can be hard with all of those messages that the world gives us to remember that we are created by God. There is someone who carved us out of wood, except not literal wood, because, well, yeah. He made us on purpose, for a purpose. And our attention is constantly being fought for, and it's easier to listen to the loud voices of the world telling us our identity and our purpose than it is to listen to God giving us our identity and purpose. It's easier, but it's not better. Psalm 139 tells us that God created our inmost being. God knit us together stitch by stitch. Now, when I was in college, how many of you know how to knit? Okay, just a handful. Okay. So when I was in college, I learned how to knit. And this passage has a little bit fuller of a meaning um, to me now. Because when I was first learning how to knit, I would drop stitches, which means that if so when you're knitting, you have like a set number of stitches per row. And then when you go to the next row, you're supposed to have that same amount. Um, but I would, you know, start with 20 stitches in a row. And then by row five, I have 17. Um, and it's, it's not, knitting is not an easy activity to learn how to do. I was, found it very difficult. Um, and there's not a good way to fix it when you drop stitches. Really, the only way to fix it is to pull it all out and start again. 
um, because otherwise you're going to have holes all over your project. And I just remember it taking me forever to finish my first scarf because I kept messing it up. David says in verse 14 that he praises God because he is fearfully and wonderfully made. God's works are wonderful. David praises God because he, like Lucia in the story, allows God to define him. God doesn't drop stitches. So when it says that God knit us together, we know that he made us exactly how God wanted us to be. God made us on purpose the way we are. So my prayer for our graduates and for all of us is that we would do what Lucia did and what she encouraged Punchinello to do, to visit with God daily, to allow our identity to come from who God says we are rather than who the world says that we are. Because you were created on purpose, just as you are. From the color of your eyes, to the things you like to do, to your passions, to your calling, God made you. Don't let the world tell you who you are. Let God. Find your identity in Christ and let the stars and dots just start to fall off. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, thank you for creating us, for creating us and knitting us together stitch by stitch on purpose for the plan that you have for us. God, help us to remember that each of us, while we are different, is uniquely cherished by you. Um, and allow us, help us to call that out in one another rather than continuing to give each other stars and dots. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. I invite you to stand if you're able.